The year is 1876. At the gas motorenfabrik Deutz in Cologne, Nicholas Otto has just invented the first four-stroke engine in the world. Gottlieb Daimler and Wilhelm Maybach also work at Deutz, both in management positions. The two men have known each other for 10 years and are close friends. Now Daimler and Maybach aim to develop the engine to series maturity. They succeed. The stationary engine for industrial purposes becomes a sales hit. Gentlemen, in the general meeting you have just heard the positive results. This is in no small part the result of Mr. Daimler's foresighted management. Maybach's new design has also considerably reduced the costs and simplified the manufacture. However, Daimler and Maybach want more. They feel that the engines are too slow, too large and too heavy. The two inventors share a different vision. They want to design a fast, small, light engine that can be installed anywhere. In the future, the engine should motorize everything that had previously been done using animals or steam power. In this garden house in Stuttgart Bad Cannstatt, their vision soon takes on concrete forms. Together, they design the first fast combustion engine and the first installable engine, the grandfather clock. In 1886, the time has come. The first Daimler motor coach is finished. However, they remain unsuccessful. People are frightened of the clattering vehicle. The new engine has to prove itself in fire trucks, trams, and a steerable balloon. Only then do people begin to accept the new mode of transport. In 1889, the first breakthrough, at least in France, at the World Exhibition in Paris, Wilhelm Maybach's four-wheel steel wheel wagon is successful. Two French companies purchase a license, and only a few years later more than 500 automobiles are already on the roads in France. However, in Germany, people remain reticent. One year later, Gottlieb Daimler founds the Daimler Motoren Gesellschaft together with several partners. Maybach invents the Phoenix engine and is appointed technical director. He tirelessly continues working on his inventions. Acting on the suggestion of the passionate Austrian racing driver Emil Jelinek, in 1900 Maybach ultimately designs a racing car with a 35 horsepower four-cylinder engine. Jelinek names the car after his daughter. The Mercedes is born. This automobile, which mirrors the design of today's modern vehicles, becomes a success. The triumphant success of motorized transport has now become unstoppable. After Daimler's death in March 1900, Maybach finds himself in a difficult position in the Daimler Motoren Gesellschaft. From 1909 onwards, he works in a company in which his son is a shareholder. He has had enough of cars for the time being. At Motorenbau GmbH, he develops engines for airships, airplanes and trains, together with his son Karl. In 1922, the company once again begins to produce luxury vehicles, and naturally, they bear the name Maybach. 